Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and tonight we are talking all about some fun St. Patrick's Day activities you can do in your classroom using things you already have or maybe with a few fun principles. So I want you to tell me in the comments what's your favorite or your go-to um, St. Patrick's Day activity that you have to do or you love to do every year in your classroom. So tell us that in the comments so we can learn from each other. And then I'm going to jump right in. And I also wanna say, I do have another um, St. Patrick's Day Facebook Live that I did a couple years ago um, that has more ideas. So if you wanna check that out too, you can do that. And then at the top of this post, there's links to all the things, links to my blog, which has details about how to make like St. Patrick's Day sensory bottles and has a freebie for you. And then there's links to like my TPT store, um, Amazon favorites, all the things, so the, all the links are at the top. So again, tell us your favorite St. Patrick's Day activity in the comments, and we're gonna jump right in. So one thing I love to do is um, always get out like themed manipulatives, but St. Patrick's Day is kind of a tricky one because there aren't a ton of fun manipulatives for a St. Patrick's Day theme, but you can see these little coins, I made them. So I literally took like the little, I'll show you my little tray of manipulatives in a minute. But I just took the gold coins you buy from like the Dollar Tree, like the plastic fake ones. Um, and I put letter stickers or just those dot stickers on them. And then on each side I have a letter. So there's like a uppercase D on this side. And then on this side there's a lowercase D. Sorry, it's backwards for you guys. Um, but that way I have some fun little letter manipulatives to go with the St. Patrick's Day theme. I think this tray is either from like the dollar store or like a party store. I don't know where I got it, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I've, but just a fun tray that's seasonal, adds some a little bit of extra spark. Um, these little cauldrons, which are usually out around Halloween, um, you can get them at the Dollar Tree or I'm sure like a party city place has them. So that's always really fun. And then you can always just get out the manipulatives you always use, but just get out like those, like St. Patrick's Day colors or whatever theme you're doing those colors. So just get out those for the cubes and the dice. I love using gems, blue, um, green ones. Pom-poms are fun. Um, and then if you don't have gold coins, you can always use um, yellow or orange pom-poms too. You can, of course, um, pony beads for that color. And then I actually just found these this year. So they're little St. Patrick's Day mini erasers. Um, apparently Party City has them like for six bucks. Um, this is two packs, but it's like, like it's a ton. Like it's enough for like small group um, and everybody to have some. But um, and you can get them on Amazon, but they're a little bit more expensive. So St. Patrick's Day mini racers are always fun. And then I think we forget about this one, but just pennies are just really fun um, to use. Not that we use a lot of coins anymore, but it's just fun to use um, some real, real money in your classroom. And if, if they get lost, you won't break the bank. So just some fun ideas for manipulatives you can use. I see a lot of you guys are saying you love to make leprechaun traps. So to get us started, let's start off with my fun twist on a leprechaun trap. So um, I updated my St. Patrick's Day um, Math and Literacy Centers pack. So if you own that, make sure you go download that again because I added this fun activity because I know a lot of teachers always make um, or have their students make Saint, uh, leprechaun traps for St. Patrick's Day. But to add, they're to sneak in some more math, I added these fun printable little cards, positional word cards, so they can each build it. They're leprechaun trap, and then I have the little printable leprechauns so they can move their little leprechaun to the different places. Um, and... Yeah, so be, uh, just, you know, another way to sneak in some, um, again, positional words. You can also put these in the block center. You can make leprechaun traps in your block center with actual blocks, or you can do it with like recyclable items. Like it's um, just grab some like plates from the Dollar Tree. I found some um, cups, like with the St. Patrick's Day theme. I cut up some paper towel rolls. These are just cut up pipe cleaners and popsicle sticks. Green cups at the back gold cups, I think those are Walmart. And then crepe paper is really fun because they can um, roll it out and make like a path and put like gold coins on the path or put it around it or over it. 
Um, so, and this is at the Dollar Tree. Um, so it's just a really um, fun, just something different to add. <laughs> to add. And it won't like break the bank again. You can always put the little cauldrons or the little coins in there so they have something to put inside their trap. And then um, I just had some boxes, <laughs> some small boxes. Um, like the HP Instant Ink boxes would be perfect to put out too. I know we save those for random things. Um, so building a little leprechaun trap would be really fun. Again, you can do this like with recyclable items or you can do it as your block center STEM challenge um, for the week. So that's a fun one you can do. And then I wanna come back to these little gold coins. So I have these little gold coins. Now what on earth can you do with them? So there's so many things you can do with them. They can just like line them up in order. Crepe paper, hold on. Would be really fun. Just thought of this just now. They could, you could put the crepe paper down and then they could line up letters in A, B, C order. We'll just pretend I have a B there. A, B, C, D, or they can do lowercase. So they can line them up in order. They could also make names with them. So you could put these out and give everybody a little strip of, um, Crepe paper just for kind of a spot to make it and they could make student names. These name cards are free in my TPT store. Make a couple sets because you're gonna want to use them for all the things. I have low, I have uppercase on one side, lowercase on the other because I taught three, four, and five year olds and we always started with uppercase and then we would transition to lo <laughs> lowercase when we were ready. Um, so you can make names. You could also make um, the themed vocabulary, like you could make, and these are in my St. Patrick's Day Math and Literacy Center's pack, so you can make words like shamrock or rainbow, um, coin, so all of those themed words. You could also grab some sound flashcards. These are sound magnets. I love these things because they're great, because they're, they make everything hands-on, but they're not like a flashcard, so like nail, so they could find nail, and then they would have to find the letter N, and then they would find zipper, and they would have to find the, the Z. So these are great to put out, again, they're just sound magnets, like these are old, you guys, like <laughs> mine are starting to turn yellow. I think I've had these like years, I years and years and years, like when I first started teaching, I bought these. Um, you can also do CBC words, or um, I got some CBC magnets, object magnets in my kinder crate. So I'm sure you can find those on Amazon. So you can make, you could do beginning sounds with beginning sound magnets. You can make words, themed words. You can make names. You can just put them in ABC order or you can make two of each letter. So you could have like a, we'll just pretend like this is a lower, uppercase N and this lowercase N to, to match them. So that's really fun too. Just again, something fun and different to do getting the students talking about letters and sounds. I'm surrounded. <laughs> Step. Okay, another thing I love to do is y'all know I love Play-Doh trays. So in my classroom, on my art shelf, I have a designated spot for the Play-Doh tray because I have one out at all times in my classroom. I usually change the Play-Doh tray depending on our theme, probably about once every two weeks. Um, so this one, um, I just kind of threw together before Facebook Live. I have a different, um, there's some other ideas on, um, on my blog, but basically I just found all the, the St. Patrick's Day things. I had two of these, I don't know where the other one is, but one is fine. <laughs> um, and then some Play-Doh in that color. And then I put some beads out, because beads are fun, so they could make the shamrock cookie. And then they can push the little pony beads in using all those pin, their um, pincer muscles. So as they're smushing and they're pinching and they're creating and they're stretching and pulling and cutting on the Play-Doh, they're building all those fun, fine motor muscles. You can also put some gold coins in there and putting a poppet in your Play-Doh tray would be so fun because they can either just roll little balls and put those in the poppet and then they could put like a little gold coin in there or a little gold bead or they could roll like a Play-Doh snake and then they could cut it. And again, if you don't have Play-Doh scissors, you can totally use regular scissors. Um, and then they can cut up the Play-Doh and put it in the poppet and they can put the beads in there on top, again, using all of those little muscles. 
And then I also just grabbed all of my green Play-Doh tools. So this is like a lemon squeezer. This is from the Dollar Tree and so much fun. So they put the Play-Doh in and they can smash it. And as they're smashing it, they're working on their grip strength and strengthening those hand and their wrist. And then they have to get it out. So I have to pull it out and they would have to pull it out from the inside too. And then, so that's a fun idea for a Play-Doh tray, but you guys can make it with whatever you have in your classroom. Again, you can put mini erasers in there, you can put coins in there, um, you could also put like gems in it. Whatever you guys have, just put it in there. You can put some of these cauldrons in there, um, whatever works, or whatever you have, again, um, on hand in your classroom. Um, a fun cutting activity, and look, you can tell I just keep it in this bag, is just for them to cut straws. And they like it because they pop. But look at all this, oh, I'm holding my scissors the wrong way. <laughs> so they can cut the straws. And then if you put pipe cleaners in, they can string the beads. I also have beads in the bottom of my tray and some sequins for fun. Um, so they can put the beads on the pipe cleaners too. So then they're developing that hand-eye coordination um, and scissor skills and they're lacing. So tons of tons of fun, fine motor and just a super simple cutting tray or you can make that your sensory table. Um, if you saw my teaser for tonight's Facebook Live, it was a fun sensory tray. So I love using um, these split peas for St. Patrick's Day because they're green. Um, and I don't really use these that much during the year, so it's like a different filler. If you can't use um, uh, food in your sensory bin, try um, putting in some of those, um, like the puffle, the green puffle in there would be really fun, or um, like that green pet bedding, that would be fun too. And then I found these little shamrocks, so I put those in there, and there's some little, I found like green and, um, the little buttons, I, I think they're in like the Target dollar spot one year. Um, and then I found little rainbows, those are in there too. And then the cauldrons are in there. Oh, I forgot my little scoop. Oh, here it is. So, I love using little measuring scoops in the sensory table. One, because they're super cheap. <laughs> you don't, you get four for a dollar usually. And they have to scoop and they can fill it and they can dump it. And then if you want to make it even more fun, you can also put number stickers on these cauldrons. So like this would be the number four and they would have to put four coins in. So you can sneak in some literacy there. Oh, you could also put numbers on these coins too. And then, like let's say you have this, let's say you do a St. Patrick's Day theme for two weeks. So you could do this for one week or a couple days and then the next day, so I always use these little bins just so you know for Facebook Live. My my sensory table is bigger, so this one, I would just literally put this like in the back. And then I would sprinkle in, oh I didn't sprinkle very well, <laughs> sprinkle in some magnet numbers so they can stick the magnet numbers to the, the this is just a cookie sheet from um, the Dollar Tree. Or like they can pick a number two, put it in the pot, and then they can put two gold coins in and maybe two shamrocks and maybe two rainbows. So that would be like the two pot or whatever they decide to do with it. It's open into play. I just set it up so that they have learning opportunities, whether they may use it their own way or use it the way I intended is totally um, up to them. But again, if I didn't put this in there and I didn't put these numbers in there, that number recognition would be gone. Um, that um, learning and objective, they wouldn't be learning about that. They would just be scooping and dumping. And scooping and dumping is great, but at this point in the year, we kind of need to keep um, adding and have them doing some other things with it. Are they gonna scoop and dump with this in there? Absolutely, but they're also gonna be looking at numbers and even if they don't match them, they still may pick out all the numbers and just put the numbers in one of the jars. Um, they may not be saying the number, but sometimes them just looking at it, um, they may be saying it to themselves in their brain. Um, so, because sometimes we, we don't always get to hear all the things we're thinking. Um, oh, and tweezers are always really fun to add to a sensory table. These hand ones are my favorite. You can get them on Amazon or usually at Walmart in like the kitchen section. So, it's a really fun sensory option for you guys.
And then, so this is a fun one. So these are potions. So you can make leprechaun potions. So this is just one of those like silicone molds. If you don't have a, a shamrock silicone mold, I'm sure I got it from Dollar Tree one year. You can just put in like um, a cupcake, like a six, like a little, the little cupcake tins from the Dollar Tree. You could put those in there. You could put a whole bunch of little cups in there. You could put a bowl in there, whatever you have in your classroom. And then I have some green water, which I just colored with um, some food coloring. And then what they can do is just use these little droppers. Use whatever droppers you have. I found these on Amazon lately because um, my old, my other ones were getting old and gross. You can also use those bigger turkey baster ones if you're putting this in the sensory table. And they're basically just going to mix and dump and explore. And But as they're using all these things, see how they're turning their wrists and they have to problem solve. And I have glitter in here. This is just shaving cream and some like food sprinkles, but obviously they wouldn't be eating those. <laughs> um, but they can just mix and dump and smash and squirt. And they can be problem solving. They can be exploring capacity because they will want to fill it to the top. Um, they'll be talking to each other, so using lots of oral language. And they have to be able, um, I know we underestimate oral language because, um, we're not underestimated, but it's so important, especially later, because if they can't say it, out loud they can't say it like if they don't have great oral language like if they can't say a complete sentence they're never gonna be able to write a complete sentence in like second grade or whenever it is so that oral language is so important so even if it's a fun activity like this and they're just exploring and doing lots of sciencey things they're still using that oral language so you're sneaking in some literacy there too and fine motor as they squish and squeeze and dump so oh and these trays these I actually got on Amazon. I will link them because I know you guys have been looking for some good trays. They're a little bit smaller than the ones I typically typically use, but they're really nice and sturdy. They come in like a eight pack. Um, so I will link those at the bottom when I'm done because I've been on the search for some good trays for you guys because the trays I typically use are from Target and they, like they're not out all year long. Yeah, so there's something you could use instead of shaving cream. You could use whipped cream. If you don't want to use um, shaving cream, so you could use whipped cream. Um, just obviously don't tell them it's like real whipped cream so they don't eat it. Um, so yeah. And then sensory bottles. So on my blog, there's an, I had another one, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> um, these are just some fun St. Patrick's Day sensory bottles. You can see these are the green shamrocks that I also have in my sensory table and just some pom-poms. And then it's actually, so I usually use, Fill it up part of the way with um, clear glue and then part of the way with water and then I put my add-ins in but if you want a detailed directions on how to make these um, hop over to my blog and you will see this post but see how it just goes so slow it's so relaxing these are great for your calm down area your science center anywhere where the kids have to wait like maybe by where they wait in line to wash their hands so they have something to do and explore so they're not driving each other bonkers. <laughs> and then this gold one is really fun because it kind of looks metallic. It's just got like a gold metallic paint in it with some water and sprinkles. This is my favorite, um, my most favorite sensory bottle ever. And then it's just got gold duct tape on the top, but it's so mesmerizing to watch. So, so fun. Oh, and um, somebody suggested for the sensory thing that we just talked about, you could also just use like, um, you can make phloem. I forgot about that. So basically you just take um, water and um, like bubble kid bubble bath and you mix it up with a blender and you can make like phloem, which is just a whole bunch of very, very soapy bubbles. And you could use that too if you don't want to use shaving cream. So thanks for that idea. Somebody just put that in the comments. Um, so these are Voss water bottles. Um, I, I actually um, bought them empty <laughs> off of um, Amazon. I have a whole um, sensory list, sensory bottle shopping list on Amazon. So if you don't want to have to like take the labels off, you can just buy the empty bottles. Or um, Gatorade bottles work really good for sensory bottles because they're a little bit thicker. Um, so yeah, but they're the plastic ones. So fun. All right. On my blog, there is a fun freebie for you guys. So it is, it is these 10 frame cards. 
which I know it doesn't seem very exciting, but they can use these cards. You can play war or high-low, <laughs> the nicer way to call it. So what they do is they can each, and I my I did um, when I taught um, two years ago. I taught for like 12 years, so I just haven't taught the past two years. Um, but my three-year-olds could even play high-low. Now, I would only give them cards that maybe went up to 10 or 5, depending on um, their level. But they can play it, and you can teach them how to give each person one and I like high low because they don't have to hold cards in their hands um, because their hands are so tiny and the cards are so big and it sometimes that can like just be overwhelming for kids. So you can teach them how to shuffle and then you, I always we always did one, two, three, flip and then both like I would flip and then their friend would flip and you could say who has the most and they can visually compare and then they can count to compare. So they would say I have four and this person has six so who has more they have more, so the highest card gets them. And then they do it again. One, two, three, flip. And then they flip their cards. And then they can see who has more. This person has more. And this one, two, three, flip, it's just it's a way to get them on the same page. It's at um, kind of keeping their attention to each other because as you know, when little kids play card games, they're like this and their attention wanders. So just doing that one, two, three, flip. And they can clap with it. One, two, three, flip. It's so much fun. The kids get so excited. They see their friends playing it and they're playing it. And then you can also, since it's a freebie, send a, um, print off an extra set. You can also print them off on like green paper um, and send this at home and they can play high-low at home once, you, once they've learned it in the classroom. But one, two, three, but it's so much fun. I think high-low is just underestimated. I, and I think it's one of those things that we get so excited about all these other things you can do. I think some of the traditional games that are so much fun to play, I think we kind of forget about because I kind of forget about high-low sometimes. And I always usually wait to teach high-low until like the spring, until like we get all the, all, the, um, all the social skills down, especially when I taught three, four, and five-year-olds. And I would usually pair my younger, when I would teach high-low, I always paired my younger with an older. Um, that way the older one could kind of help the younger one out. One, two, three, flip and they like teach them how to play. And then once they learn how to play the actual game, then I would divide them up by ability and have these this group of kiddos have cards up to 20 and then these kiddos have cards up to 10 so then they can play at their level. But when they're teaching their friends, that's why I have also such a gigantic stack <laughs> of cards because we, play, we use these for high-low. And you need a lot of cards when you are playing, when you have, you know, all of your students playing high low for a small group so that's why i have so many printed so yeah so again this these saint patrick's day um cards are a freebie on my blog so you can use them for all the card games and then there is a um idea page on there too so there's more ways to use these cards like you can line them up and you can also like put like objects on them because they're about the right size for like little things to fit so they can count out three. Um, and then they could do pom-poms on them to match. So tons of things you can use with cards, but high-low is always by far my favorite. And this one I think um, it's easy to forget about too, I think. Well, I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna do a little bit more at fine motor and then I'm gonna tell you some fine motor journal ideas. So it, I have a whole fine motor journal pack just with St. Patrick's Day. So you'll find Play-Doh cards in there just for St. Patrick's Day. And then there is a word at the bottom, so they have to trace the word with a dry erase marker, or they can just finger trace it, whatever you want to do. Um, but these are great for, um, when I would use um, Play-Doh cards, I would use them for arrival center. So if you teach kinder and you don't do morning work, which is great, <laughs> um, we want to get them doing and go and learning and using their hands right away when they walk in the classroom. You can just have this set out in, um, on each table or wherever, and you can have, or you can have your students grab them. But these are great to get them going, like right in the morning, it gets them waking their hands up, um, which is really important to wake their hands up, start using those muscles, so that way later when you go to write and draw and do all the things, um, their hands are awake. So we have in this pack, so these are the St. Patrick's Day Fine Motor Mats. So there are um, Play-Doh, and then there are Geo boards, and I just use the learning resources Geo boards, and then the um, these are just loom bands with it. 
And then pom-poms, like a pom-pom little card. So much fun. And then what they're doing is they're just putting them right on top. Obviously, it won't wiggle when they're flat on the table. And there are also a tried and true classic pattern block mats. And then there's ones with it filled in and blank. So two different levels. And then the last ones that are in there are these cube mats. These are a little bit trickier. So they can do it two ways. They can either play, I don't have the cubes in here, but they can play it where they actually have to put it together. Or if that's too tricky, which for a lot of pre-K, um, probably not kinder, but pre-K or three-year-olds it might be. So they can just literally put the blocks on top of it um, to make the object. So yeah, super fun. Gets them learning and going in the morning. Those, those are types of things that I would always do in the morning for arrival time because when I had arrival time, I had kids, they had a 15 minute window to come or when I, when I taught half day and when I taught full day, they had about an hour and a half window where parents would drop off. So that way we had things set up. So they would always do the table time activity when I taught full day and then they would go pick a center to play in. So they kind of did like a half to um, activity, which would be the table activity. And then they went to play in their centers. So, so fun. All right, you guys ready for some fine motor journal activities. So these are fine motor journals and I have a whole thing about it. I'm working on the blog post in my TPT store with tons of ideas, but you don't need that pack to do these. And again, you can use these in a journal or you can use on paper. It's totally up to you. So this one, they are just making rainbows. So they're gonna make a, a, um, a bump. So they're gonna go bump and they would make all the red ones. So they would go bump, bump and they would say space them out all over and then say okay what color comes next and they would say orange or they can make rainbow rainbows in whatever color they wanted you don't have they don't have to do them in order um, at all so that's a fun one they could do you can also stick it together make a pot of gold so it would be a um, they would make a U shape and then go across to make the big pot and then do a whole bunch of circle coins. And you could say, oh my gosh, what letter does that, was that pot of gold look like? Oh my gosh, it looks like an uppercase U. And then they go on this side and then they make the uppercase U on this side. And then they can make paths. So I just gave them little strips of paper and then they cut them up. Again, super simple, fine motor, but it's boring to cut up paper and do nothing with it. So. I said, you have to cut out this paper and make a leprechaun path. And I just gave everybody two stickers so they had a start and a stop. And then they had to make a path and wherever they wanted it to go. You could also have them draw the path first and then put their little, um, their little cutting pieces on the top. And then this one's super simple, but um, just whole bunches. So I know um, there's always like fun St. Patrick's Day like stationary or honestly, this isn't really even St. Patrick's Day. It's just like different green pattern <laughs> scrapbook paper I had. Um, and I just cut strips and then they just use, they just use hole punches. I think this one's from the dollar store and they just punch holes in it and then they just glued it in and I gave everybody a little square of stickers and that was the fine motor activity for that day. And again, if you don't wanna do these in your fine motor journal, you can just do them on a piece of paper too. And then the, um, you could also do clovers. So you can go bump, 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 and then line down. Talk about how they make a clover or a little shamrock. And then, oh my gosh, what letter does that look like? Oh, it kind of looks like letter P. So they go line down first and then little bump, and it goes to the side. So a fun little way to practice letter P. And then if your kiddos are ready, they can, and um, make a rainbow using different types of lines. So in my fine motor journal pack, it has all the different types of lines you can make. Now, if you don't have my fine motor journal pack, you can just make a little poster and draw all the different types of lines, like a zigzag and a dashed and bumps and um, loops and all the things. And then they get to pick which ones they want and they get to make the rainbow with all of the different types of lines. Now this would probably be too, too tricky for three-year-olds, but if you have three-year-olds, just have them make a big giant rainbow instead. So fun. And then you can always too, that's the next idea. Um, they can always too rainbow write. So rainbow writing is when you write in each color. So if I'm gonna make a J for Jackie, so I'd make a J in red, 
and then I'm gonna trace it again in orange. Now, you can make do this smaller, you can do it bigger, you can do this with sight words, you can do this with their whole name, totally up to you, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then you just use all of the colors of the rainbow. Whoops. And then you have a gorgeous little rainbow and they're practicing writing in a fun way. If they're really struggling, you can always write it first in yellow and then they can trace. So they have um, kind of a jumping off point to get started. So rainbow writing is fun again for a letter, their name, um, sight words, um, anything. I'm gonna share some more ideas with you guys. So if you guys have my stews, my counting stews, this is the leprechaun counting stew. So what they're gonna do is they pick a recipe card and then they make their leprechaun stew. So they would get two shoes. Now, I didn't have shoes, so what did I do? I just cut little foam pieces and looked like shoes. So they would get one, two, and then they have two, five hats. So I found these at the dollar store. They're those like little ones. You can tell like there's still staples in them and I just took them off. So one, two, three, four, five, and then three shamrocks. One, two, three. So a lot of the stuff I just found at the dollar store. I didn't have rainbows at the time, so I just made some on a pipe cleaner. But I mean, you could always use rainbow mini erasers too, but I didn't have them. So when I made this and set it up, I just used little beads on a pipe cleaner. And then horseshoes, I couldn't find that manipulative either. Oh gosh. So I just made some with some pipe cleaners. Again, this doesn't have to be fancy, and then they mix it up. And then there's a song, they can sing their stew song. And then they put everything back, so then they're sorting. And then they pick another card. Now, if you don't have a whole bunch of these pots, I usually find these around Halloween, because they're cauldrons. Um, but you can just use like smaller little pans from like your kitchen set in your, um, Pretend area. Then this one has three shamrocks, two coins, and four horseshoes. One, two, three, four. And they mix it up with their spoon, which I forgot to bring over here for Facebook Live. And then they put it back. So if you haven't tried counting stews yet, you totally should. They're so much fun. Um, this is this is the St. Patrick's Day one. It's in the holiday set, and then it's in the gigantic bundle. Um, but they are so much fun and the kids love playing them and these little trays are from Lakeshore or you can just get them at like a party store. You guys know I love these trays because I use them for like Play-Doh trays. Um, I have a giant stack of them. So. <laughs> but they're great for kids because they wash and they're awesome. Um, do I model the counting stews or um, what? So usually, um, so I have counting stews out randomly. I don't do them for every theme, um, but for most themes, I put one out and I'll put it like in the middle of the math table or it'll be on the math shelf. Um, so the beginning of the year or around, you know, middle of September, I teach how to play the counting stews. So um, the first time we do it for small group and then maybe, you know, a month later, we'll do it again for small group or we'll put it out for a table time activity. Um, but the first time I model it first, and then the kids play, and I may have two counting suits out, so that way um, everybody can play um, and a, a counting stew. And then um, after that, it's usually just out in centers, and then it's out either for small group, because um, I can use that as a great math assessment, um, just by observing them counting and identifying numbers. Um, so that's a great way to assess kiddos, just by watching them play. And then, um, yeah, and then it's just out. And if I see them struggling with it, then I'll reteach it um, for small group. I know some people also put um, like this, they will put like all of this in their sensory bin. So like their sensory bin will turn into the counting suits so rather than having out all these little guys, they would put the big guy in and obviously it would be the big sensory bin. Um, and they put these in the back and then all the different little things would be in the sensory bin. Just a different fun way to play. So that way they could all play it in the sensory bin or just maybe have a couple pots in there. Or maybe use the little pot to buy yourself little. These hats won't exactly fit in there. So um, so yeah, so I know people um, have played, teachers have set it up that way in their sensory bin too. That way um, 
Maybe they're, they need something else in the math center or they need that spot in their classroom. Um, or maybe they're just trying to mix it up, trying to keep them excited um, and going because in the springtime, it's a little bit trickier to keep them excited <laughs> and engaged, as we all know. Oh, and this is how I keep it. So when, once I'm done with the, all the pieces, I put all of them in here and then I put it in my like stew bucket or like crate and then I can just pull this out and put it in the tray and we're right in there then I can put it out for centers um, because as we all know like it takes a while to switch everything out for um, all the themes so somebody's asking about my shirt I want to say this is in one of my kinder crates which is a monthly subscription box you can grab which I'll drop the link for that in a minute or after we're done um, they you have fun shirts Oh, Alicia said for smaller green hats, she used plastic soda bottle caps. Oh, that's so smart. See, teachers, you guys are just the best. Um, so we're just gonna keep going. So I know you guys love the coin letters. So if you don't have those coin letters, I have printable coin letters in my te in the St. Patrick's Day set and look what I made you guys. <gasps> so fun. It's in rainbow rice. So if you don't wanna do like a St. Patrick's Day, um, sensory bin, you can always do a rainbow sensory bin with some gorgeous rainbow rice. And how you make rainbow rice is just rice. And I just use liquid watercolor in a baggie, shake, 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 and lay it out to dry. Um, so yeah, so fun. But here are some fun, uh oh, where are they? Some fun things you can do. And again, you could use these paper letter coins or you can use the letter coins that I made with the stickers. So, they, you can make, oh, you know what? I said this at the beginning, but that's okay. I meant to show you guys this at the beginning, but I got excited and kept going with something else. Um, but you can make names, and this little printable pot is in there. And then you can also have them make sight words, because there are sight word cards, so they can make little sight words. And then there are worksheets included, so they can rainbow write the sight word games. Or the sight word on a paper. So, okay. Sorry, I forgot to show you that part when I showed you guys the gold coins that I made with paper earlier in the Facebook Live. Whoops. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to show you a couple more games that are in my math and literacy centers. And then, oh, and then I have one more thing to show you after this. Okay. I'm gonna get up and I gotta walk around. And sometimes I lose service, so I wanted to make sure I did that at the end. So this is a really fun game that's in my Math and Literacy Center set. So you gotta get the little cat ready for St. Patrick's Day. So there are all of the little cats and then they need little boots and a little hat. So they have to get the little, the little cat ready for St. Patrick's Day by getting the boot and the hat. And so you're working on um, lowercase letters and beginning sounds. And remember, if you teach kinder, you can put out the whole game, but if you teach pre-K or you teach with threes, you can just put out the letters. You can put out the letters with the beginning sounds and maybe you're only gonna do A through H, or maybe you're just doing A through E, and that way it's the, not a ton of pieces, but it's um, set up so that way they can play. There's just enough pieces to do where it's manageable and it's not overwhelming for kiddos. So that's really fun. And then in my St. Patrick's Day Math and Literacy Centers, there are two fine motor activities. There's a writing center, there are six literacy, and then eight math St. Patrick's Day Centers. Um, so if you want that, the link's at the top so you can go grab it. But I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna walk you over to show you the table of a really fun activity. Okay, so this is a fun activity you could do. You can see I have it on my table. So what I did is I took a big piece of butcher paper and then with a with just markers, I drew the rainbow. And then what your kiddos can do, I literally grabbed this off my library shelf. You can tell because the fishing pole is still in there. <laughs> um, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna sort the letters by color on the rainbow. And it is so much fun. It gets them up and moving because they um, have to walk around, grab a letter, and then they have to put it on. They're going to be talking about the letters. They're going to be talking about the sounds. They're going to be noticing the colors, all the things. Um, so that is a really fun way to do a letter sort. 
So you, if you don't want to do letters, like maybe you have three-year-olds or maybe you have toddlers, or maybe you just want to do something different because you're using your letters for a different activity, you could also sort any color manipulative you have. So you could sort cubes. So they could put the cubes on the, um, on the rainbow. You could also do shape buttons. That would be really, really fun. You could also do chains. So they would have to make connect the chains to make the rainbow. Like here's some yellow ones I have together, just happen to be in the bin. Um, so they would connect them to make the rainbow. So that would be a really fun, like fine motor activity. These are just, I wanna say learning resources chains. Um, they're great. I got them off Amazon. So just a really fun letter activity you can do. Um, just a different way to sort. And again, it gets them up and moving because they're gonna have to be going around on the table or walking around the table to put them in all the different spots. All right. And then here is my um, my writing center. It's all set up for St. Patrick's Day because I know we made leprechaun traps or you're probably gonna make leprechaun traps in your classroom. So why not make letters and cards for that sneaky little leprechaun? So, because the kids want real fun reasons to write, especially those reluctant writers. Um, so I made a leprechaun mailbox. All these printables are in my St. Patrick's Day Math and Literacy Centers. I just added them, so if you own it, go download it again. So you're just gonna put out some envelopes, some St. Patrick's Day paper. This is just some cards folded in half, just blank paper. There's also friendly letters if they wanted to do that. I just have that back here at the back. And then I have these little printable stamps. And then some phrases, happy St. Patrick's Day, have a lucky day. Here's some stickers. I like cutting my stickers up smaller. <laughs> so that way um, there's not like huge sheets out. Um, I, I, they tend to use less stickers when they're like that, um, just on the little sheets. And then there's some printable shamrock so they can cut those out. And again, I love these bounce, oh! <laughs> bounce back scissors because they bounce back open so that way um, they can cut it out. Now if they cut it through the middle, it's fine. If they cut it out perfectly, that's awesome. I just want them to practice cutting and I want them to get their scissors, those scissors in their hands and I want them to have fun cutting. Um, so however they cut that out is fine with me. Um, and then I have a little prompt. If you're going to make a card, cards need pictures and words. Now. Are they gonna, my, are my three-year-olds gonna copy Happy St. Patrick's Day Perfect? Probably not, it's okay. Are they gonna get a couple letters? Yep. Um, are, are some of my kiddos gonna scribble right? They sure are. Are some of them going to um, copy words? Are some of them gonna write words they know? Like, you're gonna have all the different levels of writing all going on at your library center. But it's just a fun, something different to do, and it's just a really nice motivator to have them write letters to the sneaky leprechaun, um, especially if he come and leaves tracks or snacks or whatever you do in your classroom with the leprechaun. And then the other thing I have is this leprechaun hide and seek up. Um, it also comes in an uppercase set. But what they do is this sneaky leprechaun hid a shamrock, and they have to pick the letters, and then they, when they don't find it, they either can um, turn it over, and they can mark it on their page like it wasn't behind there, so just put an X on it, or you don't have to have the worksheets out too, and then they basically just keep picking the cards, picking the letters until they find that shamrock. This is a really fun game to model um, for a transition activity, so if you're doing circle, have the, Leprechaun hide and seek, have that just literally take this and I literally put it over there um, and I use it as a transition so each kid, as, the, as I call on a kid to go wash their hands for snack, they pick a letter, is it is it back there? Oh, no, this one it is. Oh, they found one of them and I, I, I think there's like four shamrocks so that way um, once one finds one they have to find all four. Um, but it's a really great transition activity to do and it gets them talking about letters. I hope you guys loved that Facebook Live all on St. Patrick's Day. <sighs> it was a fun one. I hope you guys are loving the new or updated unit. Again, I updated it, so if you own it, go download it again. If you don't have it, go grab it. It's so much fun. Um, don't forget about the free um, 
clover or shamrock 10 frame card so you can play high low with your class and send us at home um so yeah so i hope you guys have a fun and fabulous week